Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have 10 of my favorite beach DIYs to show you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So let's get started. The first one we're going to use one of these little wire baskets from the Dollar Tree and just a salad plate from the Dollar Tree. I was able to find this great like mint green color but in the end, you're probably not even going to be able to see it, so it probably doesn't matter what color you find. But see how it fits perfectly, like right on top of the basket? I thought we could make this a fun little beach candle display. So first up, I am just going to paint the basket ivory. I know it's white, but I kind of like to go with an ivory theme for most of my DIYs. And surprisingly easy to paint. I am just kind of dragging that all over. But if you like it white or they also have it in black, I believe, you can totally leave it that color for sure. But this is just me being extra. Now, I kind of want it to look ivory all around. So I do go around the inside as well, just because you can kind of see through it. But in the end, we're gonna have like a little ivory basket. And this DIY was so easy to do. What I wanna do is make it look like it is full of seashells from the beach. So once I got it all painted and dried, I'm just gonna fill it up with shells from my stash. Like these, a lot of these are from the Dollar Tree, but some of them are probably my own. I kind of mix them all together, but I want a variety of different kinds of shells, colors, sizes. So we're just gonna pile these in here. I am always looking for a fun way to display, display my seashells because you know your girl has a lot. <laughs> and some of those are definitely some beach treasures. I see some little walnuts and stuff like that, but I think that looks pretty good. And then I just put the lid on top. I think that's gonna fit perfectly. Now I, I wanted it to have a little bit more of a coastal touch. So I am using some Dollar Tree rope and I thought I would line the top and the bottom of the wire basket. You might wanna do this step before you put all your shells in there so meticulously. But I'm just putting hot glue on one side of the rope and just gluing that all the way around the bottom. Adding rope to any kind of DIY is definitely gonna give you that coastal vibe or touch. And I'm also gonna go around the top and do the same thing right around the, the rim, right on the top with my hot glue. And my theme today for these beach DIYs, we're gonna be focusing a lot on sea creatures. So I have lots of fun ideas to show you for DIYs that include sea creatures. And these shells were once sea creatures, I believe. <laughs> So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna just go ahead and burn off the fuzzies on the rope that we added. And I think that really um, made it look, I, you know, it took away some of that wire feel, made it look more coastal. I think that's gonna be a really good base for this candle holder. This was so easy, because basically we're just gonna take the salad plate now and put it right on top and then we are gonna fill it up with sand and candles. So it really fits in there really nicely with the rope on there because it kind of provides like a little bit of a lift there to keep it in place, which is important when you're burning candles. Now we're filling it up with Dollar Tree sand. I'm just using white sand because that is what I had and just spreading it all over the Dollar Tree plate. That's where you can see it doesn't really matter that I had a cool color. And then I'm just gonna use a little tea light candles and I am just gonna stagger them all over in the sand. Kind of creating like a little bit of a pattern, I guess. And just pushing them down into the sand so they aren't wobbly or anything like that. Probably the more sand you use, the better. And then to decorate the little beach scene on top, we're gonna use some of those little tiny shells from the bottles at Dollar Tree and some little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon available in my shop below. 
just kind of all over. And this has held up really well. Um, I've used it a lot. You can just switch out the tea light candles. It's so cute for indoor or outdoor. I use this a lot in my Florida room for decoration and for candles. And this is how it looks all lit up. And it was so easy and inexpensive to make. Our little seashell and sand candle holder. I love it. What do you guys think? Okay, are you ready for a, another beach DIY? The second one, I'm gonna dupe this. I found this Whales on Wood art print online and I thought we could do something very similar. So what I did is I got all these like watercolor um, whale images to try to recreate it. I really like the watercolor look of the whales. And down below, I will include a link to all of these whale files for you so you can recreate this project. But basically all I did was print them out like on a regular printer, just on cardstock. I get cardstock at Target or wherever I can get it. It's pretty inexpensive and you can see how stiff it is. It's going to make um, kind of a durable um, object that we can Mod Podge on. This whale kind of has a mouth to cut out and I'm just going in and cutting all of those out. I think I found a good variety. Um, I will include the whales like individually and all together. If you have any trouble downloading the files, let me know and I will try to upload them on our Facebook group. Okay, now for the sign part. You guys know I love crafting with these wall shelves from the Dollar Tree. And this one, and we're gonna use five of them. I love them because they're nice and thick. They're cute wood, but you can also paint them. I like the idea of being able to tie different signs together. It's really gonna give it a coastal feel. So first up, we're just gonna remove all these from the packages and cut off all of the hangers. That is a good twine and they do have little wire um, rings on there that you might wanna save for future DIYs. But this is going to be a really cute, kind of large whale um, wall hanging that I still have in my hallway. I absolutely love it. It turned out fantastic. So a total of five signs. We're gonna have four whales and five signs. So I'm gonna kind of like overlap them in between the different um, signs, but I want to paint it. I want it to have an ivory background. So I'm going to go over the whole thing with ivory acrylic because um, the original piece that I'm trying to dupe was also um, and oh, had a white background. So I'm kind of going for that same kind of look, but using supplies from the Dollar Tree. The original whale sign that I'm trying to dupe was from Kirkland's and it was $60. So I think we can do it. Now I just go over it with a couple coats of ivory. I really want like a sharp contrast with the whales we're gonna add to this piece. And I really want that to be bright and ivory on the back. I find it easier to kind of paint these before I attach them together. Now, another thing I'm gonna do before I attach them together is add our whales. As you can see, I alternated. I want, have two going right and two going left, and so you can kind of alternate them as well. Now, while I have my signs like touching, as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my whales because like I said, I have five boards and four whales, so we're gonna be cutting these guys. I do a thick layer of Mod Podge down and then lay my little cardstock whale right on top, kind of making sure that I have it centered because I'm going to have use that for reference like as I am moving down the sign. And that looks better. And then I'm going to go over the top of the cardstock with Mod Podge as well. Um, as you can see, it holds up really well. Um, to the Mod Podge because it's such a thick paper, but I'm gonna go ahead and Mod Podge it again just to make sure that it is secure. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing, moving down the sign with our other whales, Mod Podging them like right over like the seam in between the two boards. And you know, some of these are taller than others, but it's all gonna, I think it's all gonna fit here nicely. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do my final two with Mod Podge and lay those on there as well. And then we can kind of Mod Podge over the top of all of those. You're just going to want to make sure that you have them centered and pressed down well. You don't want any bubbling. Sometimes I like to go over mine with a baby wipe like that to kind of push it down and then Mod Podge over the top. I give it a quick dry with my heat gun and then Mod Podge it one more time. So basically I Mod Podge all of them one time under, two times on top. Now I kind of want it to look, you know, coastal farmhouse distressed. So while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and distress. I use ivory acrylic and a chunky brush and I'm gonna distress all over our little whales to kind of make them look a little bit more hand painted, like part of the sign, less like paper that we glued to it. I find that that really helps. And I'm just distressing and then going over the top of that with a baby wipe, trying to wipe off the excess. And then just for good measure and because I'm cutting these, I'm gonna go ahead and Mod Podge a third time on top to make sure they're good and sealed. Now that they're dry, I'm gonna go in with a Dollar Tree razor blade and try to cut these apart. Now you still have to be kind of careful because as you can see, my paper was tearing a little bit there. So be really careful. Uh, make sure you have a sharp blade. Once I have my first sign cut off, I can kind of use my sanding block and clean up any paper that ripped. And that also kind of gives it a slightly distressed look along the edges. So I think that's gonna be fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and do that again here on the next sign, making sure that my paper stays put. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you cut like in the line. It can be a little hard to see there. And as you can see, I kind of cut him wrong, but that's okay. We'll just fix it with a little bit of a Mod Podge, no big deal. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sand that as well like I did before and we'll have our like individual little boards. This one's a little easier. I'm just gonna cut off his like tip of his, um, front of his head and his tail and do the same thing here with the last sign. And I kinda like the fact that they're on separate boards. What we're gonna do is hang these together. So there is gonna be a little space in between each board. It gives it kind of a fun look. So we just sanded those. Now I'm gonna use one of the original hangers. It has that really nice twine and we can start putting this together. I string from the back and then tie a knot in the front. And then I'm gonna go over the other side and kind of do the same, stringing it in from the back and tying it on the front. The reason I'm doing that is just to fill the holes on the bottom sign because I'm gonna have knots in each of the other ones. So I string it through that sign, tie a knot in the front, and now this is how we're gonna connect it together. Um, I'm gonna string it through. If you have trouble um, getting your string to come through, you're probably gonna wanna add a little bit of hot glue to the end. It does make it easier to string through. But we're gonna do the same thing here on the other side, stringing from the back and tying a knot in the front. So that's gonna hang them together. There is a slight, uh, it's not real big um, space in between, but you'll see when it is hanging that you can definitely tell they are like little individual signs all hanging together. And the reason I did it like that was, one reason is to fill the holes, but I kind of like the slatted look to the sign. I think it looks really coastal and beachy. So we're gonna keep working our way up the sign using, we've got plenty of that rope because we used it, we had one for each one of those signs. So just keep feeding those in and tying them together. Here is the fifth and final little a whale sign that we need to attach. Now we will do something different on that one because we will need a hanger. Um, like on the bottom, we kind of just did dummy knots down there, but this one we will actually just use it to make a hanger. So they're all attached together. Now I'm gonna take apart another one of those hangers, but just take one of the strings off. That way I can use the ring to hang it. I think that will work great. I feed that in through the back. The sign is so big, it's kind of hard to keep it all in my shot. 
tie it in the front, try to kind of figure out where my center is. That's where I'm gonna want my ring to be and feed it in here from the other side and tie it off as well. And we have a little whale sign. I think it turned out so cute. You know me, I'm gonna distress it one more time with a little bit of ivory just to break up some of the paper. And I felt like I had kind of wiped off a little bit too much of the distress earlier. So once I get it to a place that makes my eyes happy, we can um, dry this and it is gonna be ready to hang on the wall. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so cute. What do you guys think about my little whale Kirkland's dupe? I think it's so fun and I leave it up year round. I think it goes great with my coastal feel in my hallway. Okay, it's time for another DIY. I'm gonna use some of this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and just a frame design. I got this actually at Goodwill. You can use whatever you've got. You just want something with a frame and so we're gonna go with this one. I, you know, I used to get these kind of signs at Goodwill all the time for half off, but for some reason my Goodwill doesn't do like the half off sales anymore, which is kind of a bummer. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of sketch out what I want this to look like. I want this to look like a shark fin, um, like peeking out of the ocean. So a little, we're gonna do some shark DIYs today. So I just do my best shark fin, just sketching that out to give me some reference. I saw an inspiration piece. I will try to find the link. I'm not sure if I still have the link. Just somebody that did something similar and inspired me to try some rope art and it was so fun to make and it turned out so cute. So I'm just gonna start with a new package of white rope. I just took the tape off the end and I am going to cut it down to size to start making our little shark fin. And what we're gonna do is basically cover the entire sign with rope and um, I don't have any colored rope for this DIY, but I'm gonna show you how to get around that by just painting this white rope from the Dollar Tree, like paints really well. I don't know what I have on my hand there. It must be antique wax by Waverly. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I'm just gonna glue that around my template. The reason I drew it on there was just cause it's kind of a, a weird shape to try to make with rope. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I want to fill in the rest of the shark fin. So I'm just gonna kind of do it the same way, but I'm only gonna do like one side. So I do one length like that, cut it down to size. And I'm gonna keep doing a little like arced pieces of rope like that until I fill it all the way in. So it just kind of looks like a rows of rope. This was really fun to make. I'm thinking about doing something similar in an upcoming DIY, maybe with like ocean waves or something like that. I think that would be cool. And I just keep going until I have no space left. You have to be careful when you cut the little tiny pieces, they kind of fall apart. I'm just gonna glue them all in there. Okay, so the shark fin is complete. I thought we could go ahead and paint it now before we get any further. I'm just using, I think this is elephant co colored gray chalk paint. Doesn't really matter, but chalk paint does really work well on fabric. So I'm just using a brush to try to get as good coverage as I can. So it kind of looks like they are um, gray rope. Getting down in all the like little nooks and crannies, trying to cover up as much of that white rope as I can. And I think that looks pretty good. Once I get that dry, we can start working on our ocean waves. We're doing it with rope too, but this time working like left to right, like horizontal. I'm just cutting out the strips now so we can start gluing those down. Um, that's about how high I want it to go up the side of the fin. But the bottom here, just three long rows all the way across. 
And then just cutting the smaller pieces down to size on the side, like four on each one. And just attaching those with hot glue as well. So basically just a little bit of cutting and some hot glue. Really easy to make the rope art. And now I want to do it like maybe a different direction to show the sky. But while I have this here, I'm just going to go ahead and paint it. I thought it would be easier to paint it now than to or worry about trying to get some paint on the rest of the rope. I am using a chalk paint again. This time I'm mixing agave with ivory. You can probably get away with acrylic. I have painted rope with acrylic before. I had the chalk paint though. That's why I'm just going ahead and use it. I just really wanted this light blue for the ocean waves, the water, and just going ahead and painting all of that, that light blue color. And so this is how you can definitely make it um, without the colored rope because you can always paint it. I do think you need to put the rope down first though before you paint it. Um, just makes it easier. And it's okay if some of the white shows through, but I'm just using some tiny brushes to kind of go around the edges, get it a little bit more colored in. And it gives you that coastal feel with like the rope kind of like overhanging on the side. So don't be afraid to go all the way over to the sides with your rope. Now for the sky, I told you I was going to go a different direction. So we're just going to go up and down for these just to provide a little bit of variety and separate it from the water. Just cutting them down to size all the way up around the little shark fin. And now that I've got them cut to size, I can go in and just glue them in. I'm doing like two in a row because I'm like a professional now. <laughs> all the way up to the top. And these are basically all the colors that I wanna do. I wanna do, you know, the gray fin, the blue water, and the white rope to represent the sky. You could always do the sky in a different color of blue if you want. I kinda of wanted that color in my project, so I kinda of like the contrast with the light blue and the white. And I'm going to use this in um, one of my coastal bathrooms for decor. I think it'll be really cute in there. Uh, my son's bathroom kind of has like a coastal beachy feel, um, like day at the beach kind of thing. So a little shark sighting would definitely be par for the course when we go to the beach around here. Not that they necessarily look like this. <laughs> peeking out of the water like that but usually they swim right by so I'm just gonna go ahead and go all over it with my heat gun to melt off any excess hot glue then I thought I would go back with a tiny brush and some of that ivory chalk paint and kind of like do like some little white caps like around the shark to kind of make it look like the ocean water is moving and all over just kind of doing like a little wave action here and there just to provide a little bit more variety to the color. And I thought they added a little bit of dimension to like just a three color project. And this is how it turned out. Our little rope shark fin. I think it is really sweet. It was really inexpensive to put together. And I think it's really fun. What do you guys think about my rope shark art? I guess we would call it. Let me know in the comments below. Okay, next DIY, I found this food serving dish um, at Dollar Tree and I thought we can make it into a surfboard. It's kind of shaped like a surfboard, right? So I'm gonna use some of their faux leather from the Dollar Tree as well and see if we can get really creative. Um, this says that it is 100% polyester. So I thought, you know, I might be able to do sublimation on this and that's what I'm going to do on the leather, but you could always use paint in your Cricut as well. You're going to get the same effect. I will share my file today so you could do it sublimation, but I'll also share it so you can like use it to make a Cricut stencil if you'd like to do that instead, because I know not everybody is set up for sublimation. 
So I'm just laying my little surfboard shaped dish on the back of my faux leather, just using an ink pen to draw around to mark it out so we can cut the leather down to size. Now I want to put like a fun sea turtle on it and that's what we're gonna do with sublimation. But first I'm gonna cut it out and look how easy this faux leather cuts. I haven't DIY'd with this stuff very much um, but this is definitely a fun option. I was a little nervous about applying sublimation to it because I was afraid that it would melt. And I find that it does kind of melt. So you're going to have to be quick with it. This is the image that I'm going to do. It is an image of a sea turtle. And I kind of have it going off the page on purpose because I'm going to kind of have it going off the side of the surfboard as well. So I printed that out like mirror image on my sublimation paper and I'm laying that on top of my faux leather using some heat safe tape to um, tape that down to my parchment paper. And then I'm gonna cover that with more parchment paper. I'm going in there at 380 degrees for one minute. The reason I did 380 instead of 400 is because I was afraid it would melt and I'm glad that I was a little bit cautious because it did want to melt a little bit. So I had to do it twice to get the entire image because it was kind of full, um, bigger than my easy press that I used there. And that's when I kind of noticed that there was sticking. There was a little bit of melting, but that's okay. We're going to see if we can try it again. Lesson learned, sometimes crafting does not go the way we plan. But I have more of the faux leather, so we're gonna try it again. This time we're gonna go a little bit easier on it. I was kinda using settings that I could use on other projects. But this is a little bit more prone to melting, obviously. So I printed out another image of my sea turtle and taping that egg down again, using all of my parchment paper to protect it. This time we're going in at 350 for 30 seconds because I'm scared. <laughs> and I'm pressing it twice to get the entire image. And we will see if this works better. I wanted to make sure that it transferred and it did. And as you can see, it's not like a real clean, um, image transfer because I only did it for 30 seconds. But again, the melting, I kind of had to do it that way. But I kind of like it how it kind of fades in and out. I think that kind of looks cool, right? So now I'm going to lay my dish on top of the leather and using my pen again, just draw out the shape because this time we didn't cut it down to size first because again, second attempt. I know you guys always say you like it when I include my failures in the videos because we all know what happens. It's always good to have a backup plan sometimes when you're trying something experimental like this. But now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that down again into the size for the surfboard. And I wanna cover the entire dish like that. So what I'm gonna do is go in with hot glue and glue all along the edges of my leather edge to edge and then starting on the other side as well. I go ahead and glue all the way around and then I wanted to frame it off with some of the nautical rope from Dollar Tree, the white rope, to finish off all the edges. It's gonna kind of frame it out and cover up any um, of the crazy edges that might be exposed if you could see any of that print below. So I'm just gonna go all the way around, hot gluing that in and it covers like my cut edge too, so it's just gonna make it look more finished. I get about here when I'm like, why did I not stuff this? Because I do want it to look, you know, like a surfboard, a little bit rounded on top, and right now it's like super flat on top, and so I do go back and stuff it a little bit just because I wasn't a big fan of the flat look at this point. 
But while I am finishing this off, I'm gonna go ahead and just make a hanger for the back because I want this to be a piece that I can hang on my wall. I'm just gonna do that with a little bit of twine and glue that on to the back with hot glue. Just making a little loop at the top. So my plan to stuff it at this point is to try using my heat gun and not melt the vinyl but loosen up the hot glue enough that I can stuff it with stuffing. And I do like it stuffed better. So if you're gonna recreate this, I would encourage a little stuffing. I always like to save my old pillows to use the fluff inside. I'm just using a little piece of wood to kind of push that stuffing all the way up to the top so we can stuff this little surfboard. And I think that rounded top does look better once I get this stuffed but you're probably gonna wanna do this before you have it glued down like I did. <laughs> Again, this was definitely an experiment, but it turned out really cute for a little Dollar Tree surfboard, I think. And I got to have a little fun with sublimation, which I don't do too often. I need to uh, craft more with sublimation. It's really easy and fun. So that looks better to me. And so now I'm gonna glue the like faux leather back down up against my rope try to make that look as clean as possible down there for my little repair job. And there it is, our little turtle surfboard kind of showing you that it's rounded now. I think that looks better like that. And the faux leather is really cool. I will definitely have to DIY with that more. I think it's really fun. This is how it looks hanging in my hallway. A little sea turtle surfboard, because of course we're doing lots of sea creatures today. Okay, next DIY. Okay, this is probably one of my favorite DIYs I've ever done. We're gonna turn this little bamboo wreath from the Dollar Tree into a sea turtle. I had this vision in my head and I just had to make it. And I thought these things are kind of moldable, right? So I'm gonna kind of mold it a little bit to try to make mine an oval to look like a turtle shell, right? Now I know these can be kind of hard to find at Dollar Tree, so you might have to get it somewhere else. I was lucky enough to find this one at Dollar Tree, the grapevine wreath. Then I wanted to use some of their wire jute to try to make a turtle shell. So I start off here by just kind of um, stabbing that into the grapevine wreath and wrapping it around to get me started. And I go up in like a dome shape, like a turtle shell would be, cutting out enough to be able to wrap around the other side. Now this is gonna be like my highest point here in the shell, arching above the top of my shell, like that. And the wire jute does fray. You might wanna glue the tips first. As you can tell, mine was fraying a little bit at this point. So I'm gonna have to trim that down a little bit. But I think this is gonna be cool because it's gonna match with like the grapevine wreath and it has that nice jute twine um, appearance, but the wire inside lets us mold the shape that's gonna give the structure to the shell. So I got the centerpiece done just doing the piece next to it, trying to cut it a little bit longer this time so I can like wrap it all the way around. Um, Cause I'm anticipating the fraying. I probably should have just hot glued it at the tip, but we're kind of going with it here. Just cutting off the fray and trying to hide any of the excess wire. One more piece should fill it out over on this side. And then we can go ahead and start working on the other. What I wanna do is kind of make a woven wreath to represent the, the shell of the sea turtle. So a total of five of the jute wires going the long direction of our oval will provide the structure to this DIY. Now, what I wanna use to go like cross and through the shell is a Dollar Tree white rope. I thought the contrast of the white and the brown would look really cute. If you wanted yours to be all one color, you could use the Dollar Tree brown rope, but this is the one we're gonna use today. 
It is kind of the thinner one, I believe. Um, the 11 foot. And I just kind of want to weave it through the shell. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to start right here just over on one side by hot gluing that underneath the little grapevine wreath so we can get started weaving that. And I'm just going to weave over under just like a grid. I'm only going to do the three on the first one because that's all you have um, on that far side of the shell. So I cut that one down to size and glue that on to get started. I did find it, it's a little messier when you cut each piece, so I'm gonna try to leave it connected as much as I can. I'm gonna go ahead and start my next row by using the very last one here at the end, the fifth rope, and glue that under, and then just weave under and over the little wire jute, doing the opposite pattern that we did before. So this is kind of like some of the rope woven reefs that I've done. But the difference with this one is I built the structure myself with that wired jute. So I'm going to pull this through here. This is when I was like, maybe I should not be cutting it and just keep weaving. And that's what I did. I just went under over and now I'm weaving through in the opposite pattern. And it's fine that you can see the wire jute through because it's the jute, so it's gonna be pretty as well. And it's gonna help form the pattern. I go to the end, go over, we're coming back here with another row. And we're just gonna keep weaving this until the entire turtle shell is woven. You know, you could do uh, maybe a different pattern to make each one like look different if you're gonna do like a different um, more than one of these it'd be really cute to do like a set of them like swimming up a wall maybe I'll try to do some more of these I'm currently decorating my Florida room you guys have inspired me to decorate out there I usually try not to have uh, too many decorations out there because of hurricanes but um I think I need a little bit more decor out there. So that is how far one of the ropes went. Um, I'm just gonna glue that down here on the side of my reef. And then we can start a new package. So it covered about half of the little turtle shell with the one package. I wish that my rope was long enough to go around. It wasn't. Um, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and glue two together. If you use enough hot glue, you can kind of hide the starting and stopping of the rope like that. You can kind of mold it a little bit. But then with my new rope, I'm just going to keep a weaving that same pattern that we did before. Until our entire little turtle is covered. I love this DIY. I was leaving it up year round. I must have taken it down for Christmas because I recently found it and had to put it back up on my wall because it's so cute. I love it. And not cutting it definitely speeds up the process of this and it's going to make it look cleaner true too. I just went over the edges and that allowed me not to cut. So our final piece, just gluing that down to the inside of the turtle shell. And there is our little sea turtle shell. It is ready for some more decorating. I'm going to use the wired jute to go ahead and form the different parts of the sea turtle too. That's going to provide some more structure for that shape. So I just go around the top of it and I'm making a little loop like you know, the shape of a sea turtle head. And then I'm going to go on the side here where there'll be a little sea turtle flipper. And the great thing about that wire jute is you can make it exactly the way you want it. I'm going to go around and keep doing that um, for a sea turtle has like four flippers. It also has a tail. Just cutting them down to size and feeding that around the reform, tying that off. Now, some of you guys have recreated it and left it with just the wire jute. 
I do go back and add rope to mine, but you could totally leave it at this step. I'm going ahead and do the tail first so I can get it centered. They have a little pointy tail, but then they also have another set of back flippers here. And I'm just gonna try to get those symmetrical one on each side of my sea turtle too. And isn't this fun? I'm using all supplies from the Dollar Tree. Uh, I'm specifically not using the shore living items. Um, with most of these DIYs, or maybe all of them, just because I know that some of your all stores are sold out. So that's what it looks like with just the wire jute. It's super cute. I have brown walls though, so I kind of wanted the contrast of the white rope. So I just hot glue white rope right on top of the wired jute to make mine a little bit larger and a contrast against my wall. And I'm just cutting the pieces down to size. That one was a little bit long. And I'm gonna do both of sets of flippers, the tail and the head, and the white rope until they're all covered with white. And I think the pattern of the shell turned out really good. Definitely the wire jute is necessary um, to provide you that structure of the shell that you can weave in. But it was the first time I'd ever really made my own structure for weaving with the um, rope. And I think it turned out really fun. If you wanted yours to be a regular turtle instead of a sea turtle, you could always, instead of making flippers, you could always just make little turtle eggs. And that is how he looks. I think he's so cute. I'm just gonna clean up any strings of hot glue that I might have with my heat gun or any of it that you could see kind of melt that. I think it looks really pretty. Here's our little rope sea turtle reef. This would be so cute hanging on your door as a reef. Um, I actually just hang mine on my wall and I hang it by one of the front flippers so it kind of hangs at an angle to make it look like it's swimming. I don't really attach like a hanger or anything to it because it has the wire jute right there or you can just hang it with the actual uh, wreath form and a nail. And this is how it looks hanging on my wall. So cute. Oh guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my private Facebook group. I'll have a link below. Um, I'd love to see what you're working on. You can see what all the other crafty beach bums are making. Everybody is so creative in there. I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle for all of those is Crafty Beach on YouTube, and I'd love to see you over there. Okay, and next DIY, another little Goodwill flip. I got this half price. It's just a little wood sign. Um, so I got it for like $1.50. Sometimes I like to get the thrifted signs when they're on sale, just because they're a little bit sturdier, but you could totally do this with a Dollar Tree sign as well. I just wanted a little rectangular sign that I could kind of sit on its side. This one had all of that writing all over it. So I'm just going over it with a couple coats of ivory chalk paint to mask that writing. Three coats is probably gonna be necessary to cover that all up. And I'll have like a blank canvas to craft with. I wanted to make a little like shark sign with this and it actually turned out really sweet. Okay, maybe four coats. That looks pretty good. And I want it to look like wood, but I want to stencil out a shark first. Now these were the only shark stickers that I could find at the Dollar Tree. Yeah, they are like baby shark. And so they are a little cartoonish, but I think we might be able to make it work. I just wanted to kind of show you how you could use um, these little wall stickers from the Dollar Tree to make your own stencils. So I picked out this big guy and he's just the perfect size for the size sign. I'm just gonna lay him down. He is just going to be kind of like a reverse stencil um, to uh, the Antique Wax by Waverly. So I'm just working in one direction using a chunky brush and giving my little sign a faux wood grain. It's so easy to do this when you have a nice ivory background like that. I wipe off any excess with a baby wipe 
and this has edges on it as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on all four sides, giving that faux wood finish. And sometimes it does take a few minutes for that to dry um, before you want to touch it or anything because it will smear a little bit. I'm going to speed mine up with my heat gun and then we can remove our little stencil and see if it worked. And it did a great job. Now it is a little cartoony shaped um, from what I wanted. So I am going to touch it up a little bit but I'm gonna give it a light distress first with some Antique Wax by Waverly to kind of give it that distressed wood effect too. And then I also kind of just go over the tip of it a little bit to try to make the nose like not so pointy and kind of make the fins a little bit more pointy. But it would be cute if you left it as is too. This was just me being extra. And I found didn't work the best on the fins. I keep trying though. I think it just needs maybe a little bit more time to dry before I try to wipe it off. But I just go over it with a couple coats until I'm happy with it. The existing shape would have been fine too. I was just kind of going for um, kind of a vision of a little rustic shark that I had in my head. And it's okay if the wood is darker in some places than others. It's gonna make it look a little bit more rustic. So I just use a tiny brush kind of going all around. Now I'm going back with my original color in ivory and distressing all over because I just wanted a very rustic little shark. And it definitely lightens up any of the areas that I might have gotten too dark. And I just keep distressing it until I'm happy with it. And I think that looks pretty good. Kind of covers up some of the imperfections of where I tried to change the shape a little bit of the shark. And a little bit more distressing on the shark just to brighten him up to make sure he stands out. I wanted this just to be a very rustic shark. And so he's not gonna have a lot of details. He does have one really cool detail that I add here at the end, but I'm gonna go ahead and distress all the sides with the ivory as well to make it look like, you know, the same as the distressed on the front. So there's our little rustic shark so far. I do go in with like a brown marker and try to draw on like a little bit of a mouth uh, my first marker didn't want to work too good, so I'm kind of using a brown Sharpie that worked a little bit better on top of that paint. Because I just wanted to give a few details, right? So I'm going to give it some little shark teeth for fun with just a like a fine tipped white paint pen. To make it look a little bit more like a shark, right? And then I wanted to give it an eye, but I wanted to give it a really rustic eye. So we're just going to use a screw. Now, this was a rather thick sign, so I can just screw a screw I just had laying around in for the eye. This one was like a, a black screw, but I can kind of update the color on that a little bit once I get it all the way in. And I just do that with the brown Sharpie, kind of make it go with the vibe, kind of make it look like a rusty screw. And I think that looks really cute together. I'm gonna update the teeth a little bit with a little bit more white paint to make them pop against that Antique Wax by Waverly. And then I thought maybe it might need a few gill slits because hey, it is a shark, right? So using that same brown Sharpie, I'm just gonna do like five little gill slits just for fun. And again, you do have to make sure you get it good and dry before you touch it. That Antique Wax by Waverly for sure. But there's our little rustic shark. I love it. I think he's so fun. And here is the final reveal of our little rustic shark DIY. 
made with one of those little shark wall decals from the Dollar Tree and just a thrifted sign. Adorable. Okay, are you guys ready for another DIY? This is one of my favorites. I picked up quite a few of these little craft woods at the Dollar Tree because I want to make a shell box. I'm using one of these little signs I found at Target Dollar Spot, but you know what? They have these at the Dollar Tree now too, very similar. So you could totally do it with a $1.25 one instead. This one was $3. It was the exact size I wanted. And so I'm gonna use that craft wood to make sides for my little shell box. So I cut it the exact length of uh, my little picture in the back to make a side for the shell box. I want to make a shell box where I can put my shells in after I get back from the beach. And this is something I use all the time. It's so fun and so coastal and beachy. So I cut down another piece for that side. Now this end, I'm going to have to cut from the inside of one piece to the inside of the next piece. So it will fit in there. I'm not doing any miter corners or anything like that. These are all very easy cuts. So we can just square in another side. And I have enough left of that piece to do the other side as well. So I think three pieces of craft wood to do the sides. That looks like it's going to work like that. Now I do want an area open on the top of the box so that I can deposit the shells inside. So I'm just using my ruler to cut out an opening. I'm gonna cut down two little pieces of the wood, even smaller for the top of my little shell box. Now I went and bought a miter saw because I love crafting, and but I hate cutting. I know some of you guys um, don't cut, but it's really not that complicated with this thin craft wood from the Dollar Tree. You could always get one of those little miter boxes and saws. I think Harbor Freight has them for like $12. It really doesn't take too much to cut this wood. And I am just hot gluing those all on to the frame. Boxing that in, trying to make my quarters as square as I can. And then the top part, gluing the two sides on the top. And even though I do have a miter saw, I usually don't miter my quarters. <laughs> it's so much easier not to do that. And then I'm going to continue building the box out with that craft wood on the top. This time I'm going end to end for the top and the bottom pieces like that to box it in. So I'm cutting these longer than the top and the bottom pieces to overlap the sides. And this time I will go in and just cut out two more pieces the size of the sides that will fit in there. It's gonna make the box a little bit stronger. The fact that I built them kind of opposite of each other. So we have all four panels like that, that we can put together. These I'm gonna decorate, make them the front of our shell box. I think they're gonna be really cute. Just sanding that up. That is how the front of the box is gonna look. And so I thought I would just go ahead and construct the front cr front frame separately and using my staple gun to staple the wood together here on the seams, which is a very common construction technique when you're building stuff like that. If I could get my staples all in the right spot, that would be great. I'm trying to keep my head out of the shot. Now to cover the front of the box, I'm gonna use some of this chicken wire from the Dollar Tree. And if you can't find chicken wire, you could always use um, like any kind of a net material to give you like a fishnet thing or something like that. But I like this. Um, I think this looks great on the front of this and it serves a purpose. It keeps all of my shells in the box, but you can see through it so you can see all the pretty shells that I put inside. So I'm just cutting that down to size. 
to go over the little window in the front of my box. And again, just using my staple gun, I'm gonna staple that chicken wire down. I wish they did a better job of keeping this chicken wire in stock at the Dollar Tree because I find it's few and far between, but if you want chicken wire, you might be able to get it um, somewhere else. And there is the front of our little shell box. I think that's gonna work. We're gonna go ahead and just put hot glue all along the edges of the side panels and glue that onto the front. Very rustic little chicken wire shell box. And I'm just trying to check to make sure everything is square. And the chicken wire is gonna hold. I think it looks great. I do want to kind of fill in some of the holes from my, my rustic corners though, or if there are any gaps anywhere that I see along the box. So I'm just using some spackle and my finger just to kind of fill in any openings because I'm sure it's not completely square all over. I never claim to be a carpenter. <laughs> so I'm just gonna fill those in before um, we paint and decorate the shell box. And it actually is pretty sturdy, believe it or not. Now the color I wanna do is, I'm gonna do like a turquoise mixed with white to give me a light turquoise color for my box. So, just mixing white in until I get like the perfect color that I'm looking for. And we're just gonna paint the box. What I wanna do, I, you know, made those panels on the top and the bottom of the box a little bit longer because I plan to put words there. I'm gonna use my Cricut, kind of take you through the design process of how I made the words. And um, I will include the Cricut file if you would like to recreate this yourself in the description down below. But I just paint the sides, any of the front parts that's gonna be visible, we're gonna make it this beautiful color of light turquoise. And you can tell that we use like a high quality wood because you can see that wood grain kind of through it adds to the coastal rustic appeal. Just trying not to get any on the chicken wire. Now, this is my Cricut Design Space. What I always start out with is a square. Um, change the dimensions on that by unlocking it, making it exactly the size of my top panel and my back panel. And I found a fun saying to put on here. I'm gonna have it say, every seashell has a story. And so I kind of want it to be a big, boxy, bold stencil. So I'm trying to find something. I really kind of like just a basic like aerial black, just stretching it out, kind of making it longer. I'm gonna copy and paste that onto our second one and put has a story, changing that like that. Now all you have to do is go back and delete your boxes. But first I kind of like changing the color to see exactly how it's gonna look when I paint it on there. So I deleted my boxes. Now I'm gonna kind of move them around because I am making a stencil. So I do want to, um, you know, have a little bit of room for the stencil to be on the edges so I don't get any paint on my original project. So I just had to change my mat out to 12 by 12. This is my favorite like stencil vinyl. I get this on Amazon. It's always included in the link down below. It's my favorite part of owning a Cricut is making stencils and it's really not that hard. So I thought I would just take you through the process with me. We're just gonna go in and weed this out. See how easy it is to weed when you do like a big, bold, basic column shape like that on your font and then cut it down into the two pieces. I also get this on Amazon. This is my paper Cricut transfer paper. I love it. It does a great job. It doesn't take any of the paint off. It works great. It's my favorite. Um, it's not transparent like the clear Cricut brand, but I like it. I can see through it enough to usually get it lined up pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my stencil here on the top part of our shell box. 
and peel off that paper. One custom little stencil there, and then we're gonna put the other one on the bottom. I always like the white painted letters on the blue. I think it looks really coastal. So that is what we're gonna do. So I got my stencil down. I'm gonna use a little stencil dauber from the Dollar Tree and just some ivory acrylic and go all over our stencil. You know, I'm always going for that coastal farmhouse vibe, so I don't really care too much if I have any bleeding, but it did a pretty good job. So we're just gonna peel off our stencil vinyl now that it's starting to dry and weed out the middle part of the letters. Don't be afraid to use your Cricut. Um, They're so fun for crafting. Now I thought a perfect decoration for the side would be seashells, right? So I'm just gonna pick out some Dollar Tree seashells, kind of a variety of shapes and sizes to decorate the sides of our little shell box. I think it's so pretty. I love this DIY. I have it on top of my coat rack when I first come in my door. So if I've been to the beach, there is a guaranteed chance that I'm gonna have a shell in my pocket. So this is a good place that I can just dump them so they don't end up in the laundry. <laughs> I'm just gonna secure the little seashells to the side and they are the perfect final touch to this DIY. There it is, our little shell box, ready for seashells. And the back being that wood color looks pretty too, which is why I kind of picked that. But again, they have those signs that I used I'm at the Dollar Tree now as well, so you could totally do that with a Dollar Tree sign on the back instead of a Target one. But this was me initially dumping in a few shells to get it started. Okay, next DIY. We're gonna use just some of these long wood plain signs from the Dollar Tree in the raw wood, wood hanging decor, and cut off a couple of sides. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own sign. Instead of doing like a thrifted sign or a Dollar Tree sign, I am gonna make my own sign out of wood from the Dollar Tree. So I got some more of that thin craft wood from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna cut out two like little support braces here for the back to make this a stronger sign. Now you could also use um, Dollar Tree wood rulers, which I've been having trouble finding lately. I haven't been able to find them in a while or whatever you've got, but I'm doing the craft wood because I want this to be really secure because what we're gonna do is make this into a very heavy duty sign. I just go right underneath the holes for the hanger and hot glue that in place. And then we're gonna go ahead and do this on the other side too, making a small like palette board sign. And I'm gonna be attaching heavy things to this. That's why I kinda of want it to be heavy duty and strong. The first thing we're gonna do is paint this blue. And I'm doing this basically just as a background cause we're gonna be adding blue items to this. And I, if any shows through, I want to have a blue background behind it. So I'm just using Caribbean blue acrylic and going all over the front of our little DIY sign front. Now, what I wanna do is a school of sharks. So I will share this image as well. I just printed this out on regular paper um, just because I wanted like a silhouette of a shark swimming. So this is just regular paper and I'm just cutting that out. What I wanted to do was kind of do like a burlap shark and like blue pebbles for the ocean around it and make a cool scene. Now, I had one of y'all tell me that sharks do not swim in schools, but sometimes they do. We have shark migrations that go by where we live every year and they definitely swim in a school. There are a ton of them that swim together, super fun. So I'm just taking some burlap that I had from Walmart. You can totally use the new burlap from the Dollar Tree. I printed out three of them, but then after I cut one out, I said, you know, why don't I just cut them all out together? Um, that way, less work, right? So I just used spray adhesive to glue that onto the burlap. 
and I have three pieces of burlap that I can cut down at the same time. I just want three burlap sharks, shark swimming silhouettes. Now, one of you guys just told me on one of my recent um, videos that if you Mod Podge your burlap first and let it dry before you cut it, you're not gonna get any fraying. So that might be a great tip to use on this one because of some of the little pieces of this, I did have some fraying on this for sure. I tried not to get too detailed of a shark silhouette just like that. The third piece I had glued on, so you can see one of my tails definitely frayed and completely fell off. So definitely glue it first, or you can also use the burlap bags from the Dollar Tree that have that coating on them. They're super easy to cut and they do not fray. I think we can make it work. And I just want them swimming together in a school, like up my sign. And we're just gonna Mod Podge those onto the blue painted sign. So basically we're kind of doing um, the burlap first so that we can add all of the ocean pebbles all around it. But I definitely wanted to have the burlap like attached directly to the sign and not onto the pebbles. So I put Mod Podge under the burlap lay the little burlap shark on top and then Mod Podge over, making sure it is definitely good and secure. And we're gonna go ahead and do the last one that kind of has the broken tail, kind of putting it back together if we can. It's gonna add to the rustic charm of this project, right? <laughs> and Mod Podge all over all three. I give them a quick dry and these are the little blue pebbles that I was talking about. These are from the Dollar Tree. I love to craft with these. I think they are super fun to craft with. And I've used them in a lot of DIY projects. I thought this would be a great opportunity to try to do that. Now, since I need to kind of have a tight outline around my sharks, I'm gonna start by using hot glue first and just do a bead of hot glue around my shark and just kind of go ahead and do a row of the little pebbles around it. I won't have to do like detailed work like that anywhere else, but definitely around the silhouette of my shark. I kind of have to do it with hot glue, kind of one section at a time, just outlining that out, kind of performing, kind of making a little wall of shells there. That looks good. Now I just need to go ahead and do the same thing here on the other two little sharks with pebbles and hot glue. Then we can go in and glue the pebbles to the rest of the sign with a little bit easier method. And I'm gonna be using tacky glue, which is what I love to use for this. It's a nice strong glue. It's available from a Dollar Tree and it does a great job at holding on to these pebbles, like kind of some of these heavier projects. So just finishing up shark number three. Kind of looks cool like that, right? And this is the tacky glue that I use from Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna start covering all of the blue parts of our sign with a thick layer of that. And then we can just start sprinkling on the little blue pebbles until we cover the entire front of the sign with blue pebbles. Definitely an easier way of gluing on than with hot glue, and it's definitely gonna be durable as well. You might wanna put something down first so you don't make too big of a mess, but it's pretty easy to do this. My favorite part is that cool texture the blue pebbles give the art piece. Um, and the contrast against just the rugged burlap of the sharks, just a little bit of a silhouette. And I think this turned out so pretty. One of my favorite sea creature DIYs for sure. Once I get it all on, I'm gonna use some of the spray glue also from Dollar Tree. It's a little aerosol can and spray on top. So we have glue on the bottom and we have glue on the top of our pebbles. 
and just spray that all over till it is wet with glue. And then you're gonna have to let this sit to dry. I let mine sit for a while and look, it all stayed on. So that's what I was going for. One piece fell off. Okay, so more of that Dollar Tree craft wood. I'm gonna use it for the top, bottom, and sides of this to make this kind of a boxy sign. Um, I'm not necessarily making a frame. I guess I am, but the frame's gonna go behind the rocky structure. So I am just cutting down a piece for the top, trying to cut it down to size that there'll be enough room for the width of the board for the sides to fit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint in distress this wood now before I attach it. I just use Antique Wax by Waverly, mixed with a little ivory, gives me this like um, really kind of a driftwood color, I like it. And I am just going to do that all over the wood pieces, kind of wiping off the excess with a baby wipe so you can still kind of see that great wood grain behind it. We have our two side pieces and we have our two top pieces for a little shark sign. Once I get them painted that color, I just go in with straight Antique Wax by Waverly and a chunky brush and give it a faux distressed wood grain. I always love to do that for coastal farmhouse DIYs. I think it looks really like driftwood, something that should be on the side of a cool little coastal art piece like this. Gonna give it a good dry and now we can start putting this together. Now the braces, remember I did not go all the way to the ends because I wanted to leave room um, for the sides of this. But I'm definitely doing this part after everything else dried. I just thought it would be easier. So taking a side piece, I just do a bead of hot glue all along and then just gluing it on the back of our sign flush with the outside edges to create like a little boxy sign, if you know what I mean. It, I'm gonna make this to hang on my wall. So this is gonna kind of push it out from the wall, definitely make it look like a thicker piece of art for sure. And I'm just gonna attach the other side as well. I went end to end with my sides. I cut my inner pieces a little bit shorter so they would fit right inside. And just like I glue the sides, I'm just gonna glue it all the way flush with the edges, trying to make the um, corners square too, attaching them together with a little bit of hot glue. And the final side of our little box sign. Now I did have a little bit of cracks. My cuts were not perfect there on the top and the bottom of my sign. So that's okay. I just fill that in with a little bit of spackle. And I can always touch that up once it dries. With just some more antique wax by Waverly, kind of distressing it like we did the rest of the edges of the sign. So this is what we have at this point. We have the boxy sign with the beautiful driftwood sides. I'm gonna hang it where like the sharks are swimming like up the wall. And I think it's really pretty. What do you guys think about this? This is kind of a picture I had in my head. Not sure if it would turn out, but I really like the end result. I love the texture of all those blue pebbles and again, the burlap. Super cute, but be careful cutting it out again. You might wanna Mod Podge it first. I think that's a great tip. I'm gonna to have to do that the next time I need a fine cut of, of some burlap. Okay, the next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these little Hyacinth chargers from Dollar General. It's only $3. It's the perfect shape for what I wanna do. I think you can pretty much get these all over spring and summertime. Um, I just wanted something that kind of looked a little bit like woven seagrass. And I wanna leave the very edges, that brown color that it came, but I'm just using a small brush to try to paint the second row um, ivory with just some ivory chalk paint. 
because what I want to do is transform this charger into a giant sand dollar for the wall. It turned out so cute. It was so easy to put together. So now that I have all the edges done, it's easy, right? I'm just going all over. I did switch to a brush so I could kind of get in between the different rows. And if you can't find one of these, you know, you might be able to make one with just Dollar Tree rope, just gluing it into a spiral pattern and then painting the rope. Or you could even use white rope and you wouldn't even have to paint it. But I kind of like having the brown edges around the side. Now I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree rope to make this into a sand dollar. This is the thinner brown rope, uh, the nine and a half foot, I believe. And I'm just gonna start here by, you know, the different shapes that are on a sand dollar. We're gonna try to recreate it with Dollar Tree rope. All of like sand dollars have like this cool little like flower pattern. So I just go around in the shape of a petal like that. And continuing it on, I'm gonna do uh, the next one, overlapping it in the middle and then making a third little flower over here on the side, attaching that with hot glue as well. And up here, I need two more loops. There's like a total of five loops on the little sand dollar flower that had, they have on the shell. And as you can see, I'm just leaving it all attached, one long piece of rope, and we're just gonna make this work, just overlapping the rope in the middle. It's not real thick rope, so I think it's gonna be okay. If you didn't want any height in the middle, you could always cut down five individual pieces, but I found keeping it all together made more sense. Now the little slits of the sand dollar, we're gonna replicate those with some of that rope as well. Just gluing little slit oval shapes um, all over the sand dollar and all the areas that it should be. They have like three on one side and they have two on the other. So I cut down five pieces of rope all about the same size and then just attaching it with hot glue. You kind of have to let it dry a little bit so that you can mold it into your perfect little shape. I told you this was gonna be easy, right? And it turned out so cute. And it's such a lightweight piece of art. It hangs easily on my wall. I like to move it around my house because I think it's really fun. So that is kind of where the last little slit would go in our little DIY sand dollar and just attaching that with glue as well. Now I just need a hanger for the back. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of twine and tie a knot at the end and then we can just hot glue that onto the back. Again, it's so lightweight, it's easy to hang on the wall. But this will look cute on a shelf as well. Leaned up against something. Our little charger sand dollar. One of my quickest, but one of my favorite beach DIYs. Isn't it cute? I'm so glad I had that idea. Okay, next DIY, we're gonna take a Dollar Tree sign. This is the one I'm using. I just wanted something with a frame that was kind of rectangular in structure. Doesn't really matter what you get because we're gonna take it apart. We're gonna be painting the frame and stuff. Don't need any of this stuff on there, the little line that goes across. I just need the frame. And what I wanna do, I wanna do like a little cutout DIY for this. I wanted to do like another shark. So I wanted to get kind of creative and see what kind of items I can use. This is a Target dollar spot like seagrass purse that I've used for other DIYs. But if you don't have one of those, you could always use one of the little bags from the Dollar Tree like this. And this is me trying to decide which one I'm gonna use. I decided to go with this one because I already had it cut and it's definitely gonna be big enough. What I wanna do is cover the background of our little sign with this and then using some of the Dollar Tree removable wallpaper, I wanna do kind of a cutout that exposes the seagrass behind it. Kind of a technique I'd never really tried before but I thought maybe we could try pulling this off. I'm gonna do a shark shape, but you could do any kind of sea creature, it'd be really cute. 
So I just cut that down to the size of the back to that picture frame. And I'm just gonna hot glue that down to it. Now I've never tried cutting the removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree with my Cricut machine. Um, I'm trying to remember this setting. I'll have to look it up. I did record the setting that I used to cut it. Um, and I'll put that in the description below because it did take a little trial and error to get it to cut through. Now I also need a piece of a foam board from the Dollar Tree in the same shape. This one's black, it's all I had. So I'm just gonna cut that foam board down to shape because the thickness of that wallpaper is not gonna be thick enough, I think, to do what I wanna do. And so I need something to attach that to. So just cutting the foam board down into a rectangle, the same size of our picture that we're doing to give me, you know, like a thicker surface to cut through to do the cutout. So just making sure that's going to fit in the frame, just kind of trimming it up a little bit can be a little challenging to cut the foam board. And I go ahead and remove the hanger too, because it was kind of getting in the way. Now, I don't really like the dark wood finish, so I'm gonna kinda of give it a driftwood vibe on here by mixing some antique wax by Waverly together with some ivory acrylic and distressing all over with chunky brush to make this a lighter, airier looking coastal sign frame. And it's okay if the wood grain shines through, it's gonna kinda of make it look distressed, but definitely trying to brighten it up from how it looked before. And this is that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree where I cut out like the shark shape in here. And this is definitely my favorite pattern. I think it's so tropical. So I thought this would make a really cool art piece. So what I'm gonna do is weed the little shark out that we cut out in it. And again, I definitely had to play around with the settings to get a good cut on this because it wasn't obvious like which setting to use. And we're gonna peel off the back of the wallpaper. Now we're just gonna stick that directly onto the foam board that we cut out. And we're gonna use that as a template to do a cutout through the foam board as well. Because again, remember I want the seagrass to kind of be behind it, but I didn't wanna just lay um, that wallpaper directly on top of the seagrass. I wanted it to have a little bit of depth, which is why we're doing in the foam board. So once I have it on there, I just use a razor blade from the Dollar Tree and we're gonna go around the shape of the shark silhouette. I kind of do the body first and worry about the fins later because it's a little tricky to cut this out. I go to the back to make sure it cut all the way through and just pop out the pieces. Then I can go back and do all of the little fins as well. And that's why it didn't really matter that my foam board was black because you really can't see it because it's white inside still, just like the other white foam board would have been. And I'm just trying to clean it up the best I can with like a little Cricut weeder to get out any little pieces. And there is our little shark cutout that we can put over the top of our seagrass background. Now I noticed you could see some of the like black paper torn here and there from the cutout. So I do go over the insides of it with just a little ivory just to brighten that up and cover up any tiny pieces of black that you might still be able to see. I don't really care if I get too much on there because I am going to go back and distress this because hello, I distress everything. I'm just using a brush kind of all over distressing in one direction with that same ivory and wiping off the excess with a baby wipe just to give a little bit more character to that wallpaper, make it look a little bit less glossy and a little bit more artsy, if you will. Now we can lay it on top of the seagrass. I think it's starting to look pretty good. It's definitely a unique piece that I just kind of had in my mind. 
And there is our frame that we painted to kind of look more like driftwood. Now it's just time to put it back together. So just putting our wallpaper covered foam board inside first. Making sure everything is good and then we can put this seagrass on the back. Now this did have like the existing staples on there. I wasn't sure how good it was gonna hold though because it's kind of thick. So I do go back in there with some hot glue to secure that in place all around the edges. And I want quite a bit because I also want to be able to glue on the back of the seagrass too. And just glue that all into place. And there it is. It looks pretty cool. I want to hang mine, so I'm just going to attach a little sawtooth hanger here about halfway in the middle. And this is so lightweight that I'm just going to use hot glue to glue it on. I'm not messing with any of those little tiny screws. <laughs> it was pretty easy to make I think. Now I got to this point and I liked it but I thought maybe we could add a little bit more texture to it right? So I'm gonna add just some twine. This is that thicker twine that I get at Walmart. It's a little thicker than the one from Dollar Tree but you could probably get the same effect from that. And I thought we could do like just a little fun like ocean wave out of twine across the bottom of this DIY just to add a little bit more character to the piece. So I'm just gluing a very basic wave shape and we're gonna do that all the way across. Now I think I still have the cutout file for the Cricut for the shark. I will try to remember to share that in the link below as well. I have lots of files I need to include on this video for you guys to replicate some of these DIYs, but there's our little shark cutout against the seagrass. I love the different textures of the seagrass. We have the wallpaper, we have like the driftwood frame, and then we also have the jute twine forming some waves along the bottom just for fun and because I thought maybe it might be a little bit off center. <laughs> Had a little room to play with at the bottom. Hey guys, I have introduced memberships on my channel for $4.99 a month. You can support me here at Crafty Beach. You're going to get early access to my videos like this one and a shout out and other perks. And it really helps support my channel and get more videos out to you. And I have five members. I want to give a huge thank you. To the following members, Coastal Couple, I am Mojo Jojo, Karen O'Haran, Pamela Bergeron, and Sally Cooper. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. If you've made it this far in the video, be sure to leave an emoji of your favorite sea creature below. And here's the final reveal. Don't forget to like, comment your favorite DIY below as well, and don't forget to subscribe. We're on our way to 20,000 subscribers.
much for tuning in today to crafty beach if you would like to watch more of my diy videos youtube things that you might enjoy this video right here thanks for watching <laughs>